So today we're going to go into Quilt CAD. So I'm going to launch it. Um, just one moment, I'll just bring it over and I'm going to make the screen larger. Okay, so this is our home screen. And like all softwares, there is more than one way to do it. You can, you've got your toolbar across the top. Okay. So basically this is my home screen. Um, and what we find is this is the how the screen defaults. Um, over on our right hand side, what we have is our layout, our tools and our size. Um, basically before we can endeavor to do anything, we actually have to tell the software what we want to do and what we're actually doing is we're going to do a design layout for the size of our, our actual quilt okay so what i've done is when i select the size icon i actually get this menu that pops up this is where we need to um, tell our software um, basically what we're going to do now, a lot of the girls say to me, well, it's just squares. How do I create sashings or borders or um, parameters of the quilt? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sizing. So um, I'll just move this little box over here. Basically, I get a pop-up menu here that I can type in 52 and I hit OK. For this exercise, I'm just going to make sure that... Um, it's actually square, it just makes it easier. So basically what I've done is I've done 52 inches square. So my quilt is 52 by 52. Now, basically what I wanna do here is I want to set the block sizing. Now, the main block in this quilt is actually 12 inches, my largest block, but I have two inch sashing and I have a four inch border. So this is where we get to cheat a little. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to do something different and I'm gonna set my block sizes as actually two because I'm tricking the software into a layout for me to be able to work with. Now, um, <laughs> I'm then going to do something funny where um, this looks a little odd, but I'm dividing it in half and I'm doing 26 by 26. Now, hopefully this will make sense to you girls in a minute. And I've done okay. Now, basically what I did is I set up a two inch graph pad. All right, so it gets a little bit awkward to figure this out. What we're going to do now is we're going to make blocks active and inactive. And what I mean by that is when I click on something and it goes gray, the screen grays out, this means it's now active, okay? Now, this is just a little bit of a quirk in the QuiltCAD software. If uh, this is one of the reasons I use a mouse, if I um, want to make it inactive, I drop and drag and it grays out again. If I just select like so to make them active, my merge function will not work, okay? Because I haven't connected the cells of my graph paper. So what I'm gonna do is drop and drag to unselect them. And I'll go ahead and I'll show you what I mean by this. So. I want to create my four inch border right around my quilt. So using my mouse, I'm gonna drop and drag across the surface. Now you'll see that that whole area became grayed out. It means that it's now seeing that as one cell. But what I need to do is I need to merge it. So when I go over to the right hand side of my actual screen, you'll see this merge button. So when I now merge it, I now have a complete space that my quilt layout sees as the top of my border being my four inch border. Now, I'm gonna go along the bottom and drag the bottom and merge. Now, 
I did this deliberately. You'll notice that the top actually undid itself. It's really important to remember to deactivate it. So when I've come down to the bottom, I click on it, it deactivates. Now going to the top, I will select it, deactivate it, then reselect it so that the cell sees it hit merge. Now I'll select it, it's become deactivated. I will run down the sides, it's activated, merge, unactivate. And girls, you feel like you do a, a lot of happy clicking, but it's sooner or later the penny actually drops and all of a sudden it's like, okay, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Don't be frightened to click. You cannot break your software. Now, what it is, is I've got two inch cornerstones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that one alone, but I need to create that 12 inch block that was really important. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, and I've got to come down six, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I select merge. Now all of a sudden, it's starting to look like the quilt top that I was trying to envision because I have my 12 inch block, select it to deactivate it, and then come in here and go merge, and all of a sudden I have a sashing. Um, now I do hope that this um, is actually um, making sense. There's no questions coming through at the moment. So. Um, and I'm going to merge that. Go up, deselect it. Now, this is actually why I do plug in a mouse is because it is a lot easier. Okay. All right. So now that it's, you can actually see the quilt start to take shape. So naturally, I would then be able to come down here, select, hopefully I get this right, merge, mm -hmm. unselect, merge, unselect. Oh, oh, cannot merge already. Okay, so let's have another go. Seems to me. So they're liking it, they're enjoying it. Oh, okay. Come on. <laughs> and you know, now you know why. If you had fat, me, I have fat fingers. I do not use. Um, if you girls have it loaded on your computer, um, it's a, it really is a lot easier. But basically, this is how you do a, a quilt layout. And there you see, um, I'll just come down this side, make it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So you can see that. Yeah, come back over here to my merge, deactivate. And it's okay to actually talk to yourself because I do actually have to do this when I'm sitting here, um, just so that I do not confuse myself. You really do have fat fingers, don't you? I do really do have fat <laughs> fingers, yes. <laughs> okay, so and it does um, merge. Okay, then I'm going to come up. Oh, whoops. Hmm. Merge. Okay. Hmm. Um, all right. Merge. Merge. No. <laughs> Click again. It is the happy clicking. Merge. Okay. Merge. Merge. All right. Merge.
Bitch. Okay. All right, so I hope you've got the general idea of what I'm actually trying to do there. But basically, that's actually how we um, set up a quilt with, with sashings. So rather than um, design a whole quilt with sashings and everything, what I'd really rather do is show you how to actually do tools, uh, play with your tools that are in the design CAD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to our red X and cross out of it. Um, and what we're going to do is this way, if you have actually got my instructions, what we're going to do now is play with the tools. It's not as fancy as doing a quilt layout like I was just doing, but it will get you going, um, be more interactive with what's actually all these other great tools do. So let's go back to layout and um, we're going to go size. Now, when I come back to size, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, six blocks across by six blocks down and I'm going to hit okay. Then I'm going to make my total height at 48 inches by 48. Okay. Then what I'm going to do, my block height is at 8 inches. I'm really, really happy with that. Um, and, of course, all we then do is once we're actually happy with what we've done with our sizing, we select OK. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight, which makes the blocks active. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is activate the first, the, the top, bottom and all four um, squares. Now, these are now active. So, okay, they're active. Now I need to do something with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and select a pattern. So I'm going to select pattern and then I'm just going to have to bring this over so that you see it because I've got the split screen. It's just a little bit confusing for you girls. Now, this is my library. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set a triangle. I'm going to show you some of the fun things that you can do with triangles. So I'm going to select 13 uh, GPF here. And I'm going to then select open down here on the bottom right. Now, what you'll notice is it's actually become active in our pattern placement screen over here. If nothing's here, nothing's actually going to happen. Um, now, these are active. We can see that they've been highlighted. When I go ahead and I select Place Pattern, you'll now see that I've actually got four designs in four corners. Now, it's not the greatest looking design. So now I'm going to show you how we are going to play with this. And this is this is pretty interesting because you can take something pretty boring and make it pretty fancy. I'm going to go up to the tools. Now the tools menu is again on my right hand side. So I select tools. Then I get this lovely little main menu that pops up. And I've got repeater pattern, triangle blocks, row rippling. So the first thing we're going to play with is our triangle blocks, which is the centre one here. You can see my mouse. So when I select on it, I've now got other options which open up. I've got diagonal um, to the left, diagonal to the right, and I've got cross crisscross. So... Basically, uh, let's have some fun and play with crisscross. Now, when you note when I select it, see what actually happens. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Now, yeah. I'm going to show you this because this can be quite fun. So you'll actually notice these little green arrows show me that we're active. All right. So by playing around and deactivating one, I've actually changed a pattern again. 
And you're all going to say to me, but why and whose would I do that? Double wedding ring is all I have to say, girls. So this is where the program is really awesome because all of a sudden that's what I'm left with. Now, oh. what it does allow me to do is I'm just going to go back to our layout. You'll actually see that that's the pattern that I made active. Now, if I actually go back to select pattern um, and bring this back up so that you can actually see, this is going to look bad. It's all in the designing girls, but just work with me. I've now gone and selected another pattern and I've gone open. Now what I'm going to do is go back to my tools and I'm going to go click, click. It's just hidden it for a minute. And, oh, okay, good help is really hard to come by. I'm going to go place pattern. Should have placed that one in there. Deactivate that. Change the pattern. Go back to my library. Go to this one, go open. Now it's my to show what to do. <laughs> no, show them how to make mistakes. Yeah. I, I think it's important to actually remember that it's okay to make a mistake. You're not quilting. There's no reverse uh, sewing or unpicking. So we'll make these now active. And I'll just change that. Go side to side and go back to my layout and go place pattern. And for some reason, I have this laptop I'm using is using the beta version and it doesn't want me to merge the two patterns. So, but basically what I'm really trying to show you there is that we can actually have a lot of fun. So I'll go back to the tools, make this all active and pop all my designs back in there. So it does look the same as your actual um, printout if you've actually printed it. I'm going to go back to layout. Um, now, same thing, these four blocks are active. I don't want to do anything more to them, so I have to deactivate them by selecting them. By tapping them, we'll actually deactivate them or dropping and dragging. So now what I'm going to go and do is select other blocks to make them active so that we can um, at least play around with a pattern. And, okay, um, so what I've basically done, I've selected every other block on the border to highlight them. This means it's active. And from the menu on our left, we're going to select um, patterns again. And we're going to go to, wrong one. Uh -huh. select pattern, not place pattern. No, because it's all right, they're active. So, oh, oh hang on, let's hit the undo there. Oh, I'll go forward. <laughs> That was Jenny. Good help. It's really, really hard to find. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the tools and I'm going to select diagonal. Okay, so that shows you what we've done there. Now, when you look at it, the rotation is really, really quite bad. So I will now show you how we're going to play with the rotation. Um, so I'll go back to tools. They're active. I'll actually go and deselect the ones that I want to. So the reason I went in and deactivated them all is because I send myself dizzy trying to decide which way things should be going. So um, rule of thumb is if I deactivate, then I'm only going to be working with the one that I want to. So basically I'm going to make this one active. Now I'm going to show you how we can flip, rotate, move. So I'm going to go back to my toolbar on the right-hand side and I'm going to click Rotate. So you'll also note that you can select the Reverse button. Um, I never get this right, so I'm just going to reverse. Um, it's active. Um, so now I'm going to go Reverse. Why aren't we not moving? Yeah, I did. I, yeah. I mean, rotate, select. Okay. It's just, it's not okay, so this is being really, really naughty. It does not want to rotate. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go to select pattern. 
and bring this across and open and I'm going to place this pattern here oh undo like select place pattern now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate so at the moment I'm really not quite sure why it will not rotate um, but um, this is the beta version, um, which we're testing the new upgrades. But basically, girls, if you do select it, it will rotate. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll just um, cross that one out. No, we undo. I will actually just select that one and cross out. So the undo is actually a girl's best friend. So what I'll do is so that it starts to act, I'm going to make these blocks active. I've probably sent you all dizzy, but yeah, and then go select pattern, go back to our triangles um, and go open, go back to my tools. Now, basically what I'm going to show is this didn't want to rotate the way I wanted it to. So this is what, is amazing about software there's always more than one way to do it so now I'm going to select the diagonal on the opposite angle because it wouldn't let me rotate and now I'm going to go back to my layout and I will actually place my pattern and now I have an interlocking border which is what I really wanted to do to begin with um, so I hope that is actually working for That's you good. all um, The other thing that I want to show you is that you can always um, go up. I'm just trying, I'm just going to shrink this for a minute so that, um, see here in your edit, you, like all software, you have these options too. Here we can undo, redo. You've got the control C or just edit, copy, paste. Um, so, there's not, what I'm trying to say is there's not a right or a wrong way to execute this. You will actually find your happy medium, what works for you. Um, but I just want to show you how to navigate within the software to these tools. And unfortunately, this is not showing up when I expand the screen to make it larger for you girls to actually see. Um, so... Um, it actually shows you there that you can access. You can select, you can unselect all, um, you can view, um, you can zoom, um, you can uh, just select alternating columns, you can do odd or even rows. Um, so it it's all there. You can select a checkerboard. So if I select checkerboard, it literally makes the software checkerboard for you. Um, Takes all this work out. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah. And I think this is where it comes back to I can zoom. Um, and so that would show me if I could actually enlarge my screen so I had these tools, you would see that the zoom function does work a lot better. Um, so I can go select, um, view, um, I can view opposite. Um, so that shows you those tools there now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to um, edit and undo edit undo and that wasn't really what I was doing so I'll go back back, back. okay back, back all right so now we're back to our screen and I'm going to go back to my layout because my layout seems oh, I've to, have gone. Mm. to have gone so okay all right i truthfully i think i'm um i've just confused it again by being a happy clicker um i'll i want to select all again the top. select all no no, she seems to have select. Mm. 
No. No, she seems to have Try actually. View. Try view. Let's go view. Zoom. Okay, here we go. So she caught she caught up with this eventually. So I'll just go back and unselect all of the uh, deactivate. Right. So we're back. Um. No, it's on a rose multiple box. Can be selected in place as one group. Yeah. Yes, you okay, so I oh, will we'll come to that. So one of the ideas of actually doing this is that truthfully, when um, if you were creating a whole cloth or some something along those lines, if I actually just select this row, when I come down here. If I actually go ahead and go place as a single pattern, I'll just do this for an exercise for you. Um, the pattern will, okay, so because I'm in simulation mode, see what's actually happened? Um, I You can't see because I need to bring it over. Thanks, Jenny. As I said, good help's really hard <laughs> to come by girls. So basically what's happened here, it's actually brought it up in my four points, which is, really quite good because it allows me to now plot the row because this these blocks are eight I would now just plot the four outer corners and it would allow me to stitch that as one continuous row um, when I go to quilt oh the pattern has not been placed of course it hasn't so um, now I've just got to bring this screen in for you right um, now when the pattern's been brought in and been placed, if um, there was any um, of those little blue nodes, I could go up to my optimise screen and here you go, uh, I've got to bring that over as well. Um, so here you can actually see that here I can actually optimise um, and I can remove the, the jumps. Um, I do have a tutorial um, that you can download from the website that shows you really how to use the optimize um, function to its best ability. Quite often I see you girls create panto rows, um, especially with our new power panto, and you'll have the first row, which will be a half row and a second row. And what happens is, is when we select remove all, um, and we do, do we want to connect first and last rows? And we say no. Quite often, um, I note on Facebook, I see this message with a horizontal line of it going from the right hand side of the screen to the left hand side of the screen. Really quick fix, girls. This auto reverse. If you ask it to auto reverse the rows, Although you've already done that in Power Panto, what will actually happen is when we auto reverse, it will auto reverse this and will then optimize and you will actually stop getting that vertical line. Now, basically, um, if I go remove all, no, see what actually happened? All right, you'll actually see that this is my number one and um, I've actually got this line going across. Now, truthfully, which I will show you in another video because Janet's making me, because we love Janet. In Pattern Cat, I would go to my plugins, which you can see up the top here, and I would take that to Pattern Cat and I would actually move the start point, which is a two second thing and it makes a world of difference. Um, I personally don't like a design when it starts in the middle of a design. Um, I think that the quilt top looks thread heavy. So I always like to be, I'm what they call a sneaky quilter. I will always make sure that my start and stop is over in the top left-hand corner of a block yeah. so that if I choose to ditch that block, um, that will also be the start and stop of the point. So it means I'm not pulling the bobbin additionally. So I hope um, that has given you some idea. Um, will there be times... 
Okay, there will be times when it won't work. So you'll actually be prompted on the screen. Um, so if I just undo this and I close and I do a trace. Oh, no, it's going to be naughty. All right. So basically what would have happened is where it's where you actually see my yellow mouse icon, basically what's wonderful is it naturally saw each of the blocks as blocks, but it did see the, the border piece as one design. So the reality is, is if I don't want to optimise that section, the machine will stitch the first block, then um, this is what I love about our software, it's very bossy. Um, the machine will stop and it will say, um, I need to move to the next start point. Mm -hmm. Is the needle in the up position? And of course, we have to select OK and she will go, are you sure? And you'll <laughs> go, OK, and it will move to this next point. And then you can, so I always, I cheat, I go down here to my toolbox and I select single stitch, bring up the bobbin again and hit OK because I do like to bury my threads. I do have my uh, software in the settings, um, which I'll just bring over here if it lets me. No, it's not going. So in my settings, I do have two tie-in and tie-off stitches so that I could lock that position there. Um, so um, if you download the optimised tutorial, you will see how I can go back and select one section over another section and get the most out of the function. We're all accustomed to really um, not using the tools to their best advantage. So um, I'm just going to close this and, um, okay, and I'm going to close this and go back to our pattern cat because that's where we're supposed to be playing. Um, now, what I'm going to do is we'll start on our um, centre block um, to make that active. Um, I I hope I hope you're all following me, and I'm I'm not um, not across as a little bit of a nut clay case. Yeah, I'm. Because Janet is so, uh, Joyce, Joyce. Joyce has actually also put up that um, it is sometimes necessary to take a block to pattern CAD and move it to a start point so it can be optimised. And really, don't be frightened of that because Joyce is 100% right and we might do um, schedule another one of these classes in a week so that I can actually so show you literally how to do something as simple as change the start point. Mm. Something that I do want to tell you girls is please do not be frightened of this software. You have to be aware um, I've been using software for a very long time. Um, I've got a commercial digitising background. It's not frightening. Um, my journey is the same as yours. Lots of things have gone in the rubbish bin. Um, bad design, bad placement. Oh, it's it's rubbish. Um, what you're seeing now is me being confident with the software because I got over myself and decided to be the happy clicker. Take advantage of the kids. Just do yeah. it. Um, and that's basically what I want to do with you girls is to make sure that you are aware that you, if you didn't get it right the first time, it's perfectly okay. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select my um, centre block and I'm going to make it active. But, of course, I've left the top row active, so I'll quickly go in there and, um, oh, have a thing. Right. Right, deactivated everything. So now I'm going to activate the centre and of course I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to merge. 
So now I have a center. Now I'm going to go, um, let's go, uh, let's select a pattern for the center there. I'm going to bring my pattern library over so that you can see. I am going to select just something from a block. I'm going to select, um, I'm in my block library. Now, I hope you girls do know that you can arrow up and down throughout your software. You can also drop and drag if you um, have active screen. I, I can't do it on this one at the moment because it's not a touch screen. So I'm going to select my block. It is selected because I have the block around it and I'm going to select open. Now, once again, it's active because it's now in my pattern screen over here on my right hand side. Um, now what I'm going to do is you can see that I'm still active here and I'm going to go ahead and place the pattern. Now you can actually see that the pattern's come in but it really hasn't come in to, it's, it is, it's very small. But you'll note over here the last thing that I was actually playing with was the rotation. Um, I'd gone over here and I'd selected rotation. So to make the size active for me to be able to manipulate it, I'm going to go to size. Now I can, um, you'll note that I can lock it so that basically if I locked it, it means that I've locked the size of that block. I don't particularly want to do that. What I actually want to do is select size and um, I cheat. I just hit the max button um, both vertically and horizontally. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is quickly undo that to show you how the other tools do work. So, step. Um, a lot of you girls say, the step, well, what it is, is my step is telling me that the sizing is on tiny. So what I'm going to do is I can go small, medium or large. And this allows, it's basically the increment in which it will actually go up, say, a quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch. Yeah. If I do lock this, it actually means I'm going to do both the horizontal and vertical, all right? If I unlock it, it means that when I select my icon, it's only altering the vertical rather than the horizontal. Is that making sense, girls? Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, basically I'll actually undo that um, so that my sizing is geometrically correct. Um, okay. Oh, hang on. We're here. We'll do move. I could move this. Um, now, exactly the same. If I use the step by uh, tapping select, I've got my step is now big. See? Now, I don't know why I would do that. Maybe I'm doing a modern quilt with a modern layout yeah, and I... Center. I need the block off center because naturally when I take this to quilt as a single pattern, what depending on the size of your machine, of course, I would actually um, select all of the, uh, no, not all of that. That's way too big. Select, oh, happy clicking. Select that. When I would go to quilt as a single pattern, when I do my four point scaling to set the design, it would see that as being offset. So it does, it does work to your advantage. Um, and hopefully you will play with that. I'll just unselect that, select that, and I will just move her actually back so that she's in the center. So, um, let's go back to our size and I am going to hit the max and the max. Okay. All right. So we've actually now done the, um, center. So I'll deactivate that. Let's actually have a little bit of fun and, um, start designing our inner border. Um, 
So we'll need to make the inner border active. So I'll just drop and drag to get these all active. Okay, then what I'm going to do is go back to select pattern. I'm getting used to this um, library <laughs> popping up on the other screen. All right, mm. so um, now I'm going to go to uh, triangles, select this um, number 13 again, and go back here to open. Now, you know how I said in the software there's more more than one way to make something work. Um, it's not right, it's not wrong. I could, I can click as many times. It, I do not have to close my pattern library. Um, I can change my mind and go, well, hang on a minute, I'm going to go over here and select this block. No, 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 I'm not. Go back to triangles. Um, it's important to realise that, play with it, um, I could actually double tap that and see what actually happened by double tapping it or double selecting it. Um, it automatically um, said, okay, this is what I want. I'm over there. I'm in the active window here of my pattern placement screen. You can change your mind. Just because I didn't use the design doesn't mean I don't have the option to go back to my pattern library. Um, and go, I'll have that one. I double tapped it, it's in. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, it's not um, set in concrete is basically what I'm trying to tell you. So I'm going to open that, it's active. Now I won't send you dizzy, I'll actually do something with the design. Sounds good. <laughs> Jenny's <laughs> like, sounds good. All right, so let's place the design. Okay, we're all placed. Awesome. Now... Yeah, um, wouldn't probably boring. say boring. <laughs> yep, exactly. Wouldn't possibly say this for anything. So um, I'll just go ahead and deactivate everything that I don't want to work with. So what I'm going to do is um, I want to make this a little nicer. So how about I rotate the corners of the design? So going back to my um, menu on the right-hand side where all my tools are, I'm going to go rotate. So I'll rotate and it's like, mm, really shouldn't be doing that. So I um, shouldn't have had them all activated. This is what's great. I'll just go, yeah, this one, I'm actually happy. This one. Well, I need to rotate that and I'll go reverse and, okay, remember to deselect it, select it to activate it, um, reverse, boom. Oh, and look, you know, I went the wrong oh, way. Hi. I just wanted to show that the button actually worked, so I'll go down to the bottom. And now I'll rotate this one, okay. Then, you know, I could look at that and I'm going to show you, I'm going to activate all of them. Now, I'm going to show you the flip mirror button. So here, see, does strange things. But this shows you now that I've managed to um, bring them all into the centre. Um or to the outer. Well, the border isn't going to join if I don't bring them to the middle. So there you go. So that also shows you that you can mirror image or um, mirror horizontally and vertically, I think is what I'm trying to say. So, all right, now I'll just go back and what we need to do is um, I'm going to move those, but what I'll do is I'll get the rest of the designs sort of situated where I would like them to be. Um, so I'm going to activate, uh, the, no, these ones are going the right way. So I'm going to flip mirror. All right. So basically what I'll do is so that these do join, um, because I'm really looking a continuous border across the top 
I will select these and go back to size and do um, max. Um, that stopped no, working for no, me. No. So, of course, undo. And what I'm going to do is you'll note that my um, little what? padlock is actually unlocked. So, oh, wrong one. Here we go. Okay, so my step is actually too big. So this is where I would just go back and go one more. And now I need to undo that. Okay, I'm actually happy with that. So, so that would actually join them together. That would actually join them together. Beautiful. Um, so basically, as you can see, it defaulted to what I had the last step on, which was actually jumbo. So when I enlarged it, you can see that it went wrong. So it was literally come back and select my step size. Um, now I just unselect. I need to do exactly the same for these two. Okay, now they're joining. Uh, unselect those. Now I need to, of course, rotate. Rotate. So I'll go back to my rotate function and rotate these. Um, they're still active. Now, this is where it's fun um, and where I tend to do things at once just in and out of the tool because they're active. I'll go back to size and, of course, I would then, oh, wrong one, girl's best friend, undo. I would select. So that means I've actually joined these. Drop and drag is the faster way to select. Do these two. Um, go back to um, rotate and of course I went the wrong way girls okay the reality is as long as we get where we want to be in the end um, I don't know why I went flip I actually want size and I'm going to do that so I'm pretty happy with that so I'll deselect those now they don't join they don't join i know it's pretty bad so this is where um we use our move um and this is where this tool becomes really handy i have found that if i use the move tool you'll actually see that everything shifts um because i've activated all of them i um find that it's actually easier for me if I just um, work on the one that I want to yeah that's better um, so what I'll do is I'll bring this I'll select the corner upper left then select move and my step I'll just move to medium and now you can see I'm using both the horizontal and vertical shifties um to get it where I want it um and I might actually just go up across um I'm going to change my step size here to tiny um I'll have more success in bringing the relationship to where I actually want it. Oh. Now, um, I'm reasonably, reasonably happy with that, but truthfully, I feel that there's actually too much negative space yeah. up the top here. Um, and this is where it's your quilt, so it's your choice. So I'm actually going to go back to flip and uh, other flip, other oh. flip. Oh, look, you know, let's go back to rotate. And you'll see that the rotate tool, uh, let's undo one. The rotate tool actually worked better and now I'm just going to move it up and across. No, 
That looks better. It does, yeah. So, um, oh, yeah. Do they have to be exact? Um, well, it'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> just true. just so that you yeah. know you yeah um and one across now you can actually see i do have a little tiny gap there mm -hmm. but if i op when i go to my quilt function and i do optimize that it will actually join them and the join will be smooth so i'm not going to um i could actually go yet. size and do um one up and one across, uh, one up, one across. Just, now, um, that would be my happy fudge factor. <laughs> okay, girls. Mm -hmm. So you you can see that I, I think that the most important thing is is um, learning to actually play with the tools. So I'll go over here and I will um, actually rotate that. Oh, uh, so let's undo that. <laughs> okay, message to oneself. Remember to deactivate the other side. So let's <laughs> rotate. All right, and then I would just go size, couple on the size, and hit move and, oh. yeah, so deactivate. Activate, I want to um, rotate. Let's rotate that, girls. Oh, one more. One more. Okay, size. Okay, and then deactivate. Okay. Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> Jenny, girl's best friend. Um, where is she when I'm doing this on my own mm. at night? Uh, Judith said hello, Judith. Judith okay. Thorpe. Hello, Jude. Uh, okay, let's do this and let's do this. Okay. Um, okay, so congratulations. To all of us, if you haven't gone dizzy, you have actually done a pretty awesome job of our um, first quilt layout. Um, one thing that I'll, I'll just show you the handy hint is this one up here is a big X. Big means all lose everything. If I actually um, <laughs> select it, if I didn't like my layout and I wanted to start totally, utterly, and completely, I would do this and oh, it's gone. But I do have the undo button. Oh no. <gasps> okay. Oh, so it's back. It's back. <laughs> so um, that's that one. You'll note that this one's active. If I use my um, this will delete only the pattern in my selected block. Okay, so you'll see. Is there a way to copy one of the corners and paste it to each? Yes, there is. Um, and I'll actually just, um, I've just had to minimise this to bring to bring this over for you to see. Okay, the only problem is, is for me um, using the big screen so that you girls could see what I was actually doing, um, when I use the drop down menu, see how I can do edit, copy, paste. Um, I did go through this before, but just so that you can see it again, I do have that function. So once I make something and I'm happy with it, of course, you can use the control C, the edit, copy, paste. There isn't a right or a wrong way for you to use the software. What's important is, is what's comfortable to you. Um, I find that um, for a lot of girls that are not um, do not have a computer background, yeah. we don't need to be a rocket scientist. It's quite easy. Anything that's active or um, which means it's highlighted, if I go place pattern, it will place there. 
or I can actually literally use the edit, copy, paste. I can use flip horizontally, flip rotary, uh, flip vertically. Um, I can clear everything. Um, and that is found in your drop, drop down menu. Um, so that that is there. You'll see I can select all, I can unselect. Um, I can use checkerboard and I'm going to show you how to go to those in a minute and show you how you can do odd evens, borders with no corners, that type of thing. Um, one thing that I did find is with the borders and corners, it is far easier for me personally to create what I did in the beginning, which was that two inch graph. Yeah. Um, because sometimes my um, borders will be one and a half inch adversely to say two inch. So by creating the graph paper that works with my quilt top, is better for me. Um, all right, and then of course you've got the view, which is the zoom, and of course you've got your help files. The other thing I want you to do is you can actually, we will do this, we'll save this layout. Get your corner back. Oh, actually, corner. okay, so Jean's right. I'll actually just get my corner back so that my whole quilt is there. Okay, all oh, right, so. Um, you know, time can be a problem for all of us or um, we never get the quilt quilted all in one day. So you can actually save it. So, um, or you didn't finish the design layout. So what I'm going to do is show you how to save here. So by selecting the save icon, I'm just going to pull my... All right. So um, what's actually happened is, is you'll note that... They can do, got a problem with the mergers. Okay. So um, I'll show you that in a minute. We'll do the save. So what happens is, is if you look here, I'm just showing you where our software saves it to. So if you look at C, it's powered by Quilt, and of course mine's the beta, but it's, what's important is it's going into my Quilt folder. So I'm just going to type this here. Oh, yep, it is. Enter. You'll see this has now come down into my file name and I'm just going to save it. It means that later on at a, a different time I can go back. So I'll show you if I opened my home screen in design um, and I went, where's my quilt? It's really quite easy for me to get my quilt. I'm just going to go open quilts. Do I wish to, I've already saved it, but human me, we'll just go yes so that you can see that this is where it is. I'm going to select that because I did make changes to it. Just pretend, girls, and I'm going to hit save. Do I wish to overwrite? I'm going to say yes, and you'll see that it's there. All right, um, so I'll just close that. If I wanted to come in and open a quilt, I'm just going to go no. I would just, my folder would open, I would select it, I could double tap it to open it. Um, it is active because I have selected it, I would just simply select the open. Okay. Now girls, I will show you this, if you're having trouble merging um, I'm going to actually yeah. make the screen larger again. And I'm sorry because you do lose the tool icon at the top that shows you the drop down menu. I do apologize for that. Um, but if you print the tutorial either from the Know How Sewing Essential website, which is the Grace Dealer in Australia, or Thimble and Thread um, Quilting website, or Janet, you will actually see. Um, in the tutorial, I've shown you pretty clear snapshots of how to access those tool menus from the top for the edit, copy and paste. Um, now, yep. so what I'm going to do is show you something, something that I found out by mistake, um, and this is where I get the tears and tanty. 
um, I'm going to actually take those and get rid of them. Now, one thing I'll show you with the merge is if I just go along with my finger and I'll, or my mouse and I activate these blocks, yes, they are active. But when I select merge, although you saw at the bottom right hand side of my screen, the software did think I did have that blue um, line Ribbon, yep. that went across. The thing about merge is it's not seeing it as one cell because I selected them individually, okay? So what that means is it's seeing each cell being the eight inch block that I originally created. I do hope this is making sense. So the most important thing to merge, you must actually use your mouse or your fat finger, which would be me, you drop and drag. See how it, by dropping and dragging it, you get a purple box. This actually sees, the software sees this as an entire cell that you are trying to merge. Right. Now when I select merge, it's seen it as a merge. Um, did that make sense, girls? I'll go back to Pat and see if I can bring that continuously. All right, because... Um, and so um, Janet has just um, put something up there which um, is good. If I had actually, um, I, I might actually do that if, let's say, let's go into pan type. So uh, it doesn't make looking blocks to create borders. No, it will not let me go into pan type because I want to be greedy and use... Um, Yes. Oh, <laughs> no, no. no, cancel. Um, I'm just trying to bring up to, to me since I use it a lot. Spreadsheet, yeah. Okay, how do I bring up my? Yeah. Okay. okay, sorry girls, I'm just trying to bring up. Stop sharing the screen. I, I... <gasps> no. I minimised the... Um, ah. Can you get pull? sorry, girls? Um, I, I've minimized it and I can't get it. I can't get that to stay there. How do I get that to stay there? Where have I put it? Uh, hey, there, there, there. Oh, okay, it's all right, okay. I'm a better quilter than I am actually a um, tutor. <laughs> All right. So something that I do want to um, let you know is that if I had um, created um, in panographs, I might. Um, I've actually saved this, so I will close out of Pattern Cat because we do actually have a little bit of time left. I have saved this, so I'll. Um, I'll put the line and then merge it won't let me okay so Susan Susan but when I put the line and then merge it won't let me okay so Susan um let's just try this again so you need to have the purple activation of the box for the drop and drag and then select merge all right and it sees it as one cell um one thing that I do do is I make sure you exit minimize it and you can't get it back to have a closed down software. Okay, so in the bottom left hand corner. What's up? They wanted to know how you fix that. How to oh um actually it I'm actually currently using two screens and when I minimized it um it went actually to my uh toolbar down the bottom which I couldn't see um and due to the fact that technical support that would be um, my husband um, was pointing at it and I still couldn't see it um, but it is actually there so if you um, the technical term for this would be wobble your mouse um, <laughs> down here in the bo bottom of the active screen it is actually there um, so it just goes to show that we all we all learn something 
Um, I'm going to actually quickly close um, Pat and Cat. Um, and I'm going to go no. I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to go into Panto, and it's because it's going to ask me to set my safe area, which I'll just quickly do. I won't bore you girls into it. I'll click there. All right. Um, I'm going to bring my Panto over. Um, one of the fun things about designing our quilt borders um, or our vertical and um, horizontal sashings is um, it's just denoted that my uh, down here in my total width, when I set my safe area, it said it's 42. All right. One of the problems that I note that a lot of you girls have is I'm going to create a continuous design out of some of our little patterns for our quilt Put sashings. Else, yep. mm -hmm. But what's really important is I need to change this total width. All right, so I come in, I tap it to select it. I'm going to change this to 12 and I'm going to go OK. Then I'm going to do the height, which is now I'm going to go two and a half. All right, so this is now denoted my um, actual sashing mm -hmm. because what you'll note if I don't alter the total width of the quilt even though truthfully the quilt is 42 inches wide the rotate function it will not allow me the software sees the throat size of the machine and stops me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to and like all the softwares girls I can either select a pattern from here or select a pattern from the tool menu at the top of my page. I'm going to select, going to bring the pattern over and I'm going to go continuous line and um, curly circles is one of the ones that I really do like to use. So I'm going to open that. Now I'm going to add several patterns. Um, I'm going to select my pattern height um, and change it to two inches. Um, now you've got your fudge factor. that gives me my fudge factor because I'd love to say that we, we're all perfect but um, something aren't so what I've done is I've given myself a quarter inch here off my sashing and a quarter inch here off my sashing but what's really important is I do need the design to perfectly nest at each side of the vertical or horizontal sashing when I stitch it so I haven't actually altered that width. Now um, what I'm going to do is if I wanted to quickly execute it, I would simply select place as a single pattern. All right, so when I place this as a single pattern, I'm going to bring my other screen over for you. You would actually see that this would allow me to just do lovely four-point scaling now, I like stretch to fit. I can actually change my margins here so I can unlock them. And by coming over here, I can just set a quarter and go um, OK. Now, what that did was I selected the wrong one because it was my horizontal. It, I've now told it sewing quarter of an inch. Let's simply do um, an undo on that. So. Um, I'll just uh, select that again and bring that over and go clear. Um, I just want to minus that. Okay, now I'll go back here and do the vertical. So do the vertical to uh, close. Okay. Quarter. Quarter. Okay, so that's giving me my margin. So if I was to, um, this is going to be so difficult. You're not going to be able to see me place it because it's in simulation mode and I always get it mixed up. So I'm just going to close that. What I would do is I could actually place that as a four, four point block pattern. But really what I do is I, if I'm doing a custom quilt and I want to lay out, I would actually save this. Now, I'm going to bring this over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select patterns and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this Lizzie's Custom. And I'm going to hit OK. And then, oh, sorry, I'm going to double tap it to open that particular folder. And now I'm going to name that. And I'm probably just going to call that Sashing Number 1. Okay. And of course, I can hit enter and then save. Now, I've done that for my sashings and it's a great border. So I'm going to close that. No, I'm going to go back to Pat and Cat. Oh, sorry, girls. I'm going to close out of that and I'm going to go into Quilt Cat. All right. So. I'm going to, Bossy over here has just told me to take it over. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go to the largest screen again for you. Now, I'm going to go back to size um, and remember what I did is I did um, 26, okay. Oh, oh. oh, okay. Two seconds, girls. It, she just um, wanted to die on me. Making it work. Making it work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, girls. Um, I'm going to go size and I'm going to, I just want to show you um, this. 26, okay. And block sizing is going to be two, okay. And block sizing, again, it's going to be two, okay. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this bigger so it, it's now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly create one sashing and merge, deactivate, um, uh, this be a little block in here, no. Oh, okay. Merge. Okay. So, oh, this is a really bad layout, girls. Just work with me. All I wanted to do was show you now that if I'd done a proper quilt layout, I'd go here to select pattern. Now, remember I created created a new folder so I would go this is my library up the top here it's telling me what I've got blocks continuous triangles borders but hang on a minute I made a new folder where did it go really easy patterns and all of a sudden you'll see custom I've double tapped it to select it to open it here's my sashing I now go open it's now here in my window and it's active so now what I want to do is select over here on my left-hand side where I did create that sashing, even if it is a bad one, and I can go place pattern. Oh, now, doesn't fit. doesn't fit. <laughs> Some people are really, really fussy <laughs> just saying in this group. So naturally, this is where I would hit max and I would hit max. All right. Now, that shows you um, I could then pick... Um, I'll deactivate that. I'm going to go here. That would be my little cornerstone. I'd select pattern um, and I'd go patterns and I'd go block um, and I'd, I'm just going to use the diamond and now and I'm going to go place pattern. So um, girls literally designing in um, quilt CAD. Um, I finished playing with the mouse. <laughs>
<laughs> it's gone. I can't see I, what he's saying or anything. I um I have kind of lost you. Um, here we go. We're phone. back. Um, it's dropped out, or is it just me? Um, okay. I really hope that um, this is. This was really just a basic um, introduction into what design um, CAD can do. Um, I just um, will show you a couple of other things that you can um, you can use the select boxes in the layout. So I'm I'm just going to have to minimise this. So if I go select, you will actually see um, here. I can do odd blocks, right? I can um, select um, 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 odd or evens. Um, so yeah, it, it does show you that you can go to layout here and I'm just just trying to get layout to tools. Hang on. Cancel. Just trying to get the layout. Yeah, that's funny. So, um, girls, um, I. I think we'll sort of like finish there. Um, is there any little questions you'd like to ask me or have I completely um, bamboozled you all? Um, okay, one of the girls has put, thanks, Lizzie. Um, look, girls, you're more than welcome. This has been fun. It's um, It's been wonderful to think that in our current circumstances that we can all connect um, from different sides of the world and yeah. really, really importantly, I want you to stay safe, stay happy and happy quilting. Just But you'll be around if they want to send yeah, you questions. I, I am around. Um, if I close this and you girls want to get on Messenger or um, uh, Facebook. Facebook or anything that... Um, Oh, girls, I select. I tried to get it to come down from the drop down menu and it wouldn't. See here, um, this is fun. So, see how I can create borders? So, what I did is I hit the select tool for layout because note that I'm actually in the layout. That's actually really important that when I hit select, I can do borders, all one, um, checker, um, inverse. Um, I can do row blocks, um, row columns, um, especially for those who plan to do modern um, quilting. Oh, yeah. But. Um, Thanks, I'm going to send most of what i So hopefully what we'll do is um, we'll, we might be able to save this video if it's not too bad and I didn't send you all dizzy and um, we'll edit it and we'll put it up on the website. Janet will put it up. We'll put it um, on the YouTube. Um, but you but, can access the links through a little easy thimble and thread. Yep, yeah, but it, it has a chat. Thank you, Lizzie and Co and Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, well. Oh, thanks. Co, thanks. Thanks. Um, <laughs> So it's um, 11 a.m. in the morning here, um, 7.38. It's 9 p.m. Um, I will say this has been different. It's quite amazing in a classroom. I love it because I, I get your expressions and I get yeah. interaction and I can see whether the lights are on and nobody's home. I think the expression you girls use is um, the deer stunned by the headlights. Um <laughs> But I really do hope that it was a great class. And Joyce, um, it's um, great that you tuned in and hopefully soon we will see some of these fabulous new Palpando changes for the Knowlton Kinect girls. What numbers did you use to make your two-inch grid? Okay, 
The numbers I made for the two inches um, was the quilt size is actually 52 inch by 52 inch. But the grid size that I used for my graph layer of my quilt was actually two inch. All right, so that gave me a four inch outer border and um, two inch sashings and then 12 inch blocks. Oh, it's 9 a.m. in the West. Vicky, I can't believe you got up so early. <laughs> um, <laughs> is so anxious for the version 5 to be released. Well, so am I just saying. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, good. Thank you. I hope we can do this again. again. Okay. Well, um, just so that you know, Janet, Janet, I adore. Um, uh, we can blame Janet for this because... Um, she really dished me over the um, fence yes. and um, make me step up and do the class for you girls. And um, Janet, thanks. I actually enjoyed it. So we'll talk soon. We'll talk soon.